Hello, hey, and welcome to our Juneteenth Vibes episode of the one and only Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes I'm Rushing. That, I'm going to let that intro track run a little bit while you, while your, you talk over it. With our co-host over here on the ones and twos, Mr. David Rushed Vibes Rushing, and we are in the Rushed Vibes house, ready to rush the vibe with our tribe. That's all I got, so I'm going to stop. Let's do this. We're here. We made it. Barely, but we made it. Back like we never left. Like we never, ever left, because we don't. We really don't. This is Rushed Vibes Studios. This, this, This is home. Yeah. It, so, doubles, it doubles for doubles. us. Double trouble. It's work, leisure, play. Mess. Mess, sleep. Although, we are recording this a lot earlier than we normally do. Yes, natural light. On a weekday. On a weekday. Why, might I ask? Because. How would we have the ability to record our podcast on a weekday? Because during the day when we have the terrorists are not here, (laughs) that's how they are at a conference where they are determining more ways to terrorize their parents. Now they are down the road, um, spending some time with the maternal grands and it is grand. Um, it's weird. Like we both woke up. Because our, our natural alarm clocks weren't home. Yeah. Um, so, you know, David rolled over. He was like, Jess, you work it today? And I was like, yeah. He was like, it's 847. I was like, dang. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we we kind of got to ease into the day. It was nice not having to, you know, worry about feeding people but ourselves. Um, I laid down to take a nap. Said nap didn't come because someone kept sending me stuff. So then I kept responding no, to no, stuff. No, that's not true. No, see. It's just, if you tune in last week, this is a part of the negative African energy I'll be talking about. You were texting me and you were sending me things on Instagram. I think Instagram. I sent you one thing. No, multiple things. I have the receipts. Ma'am. I have the receipts too. No, you don't. Anyways, continue. So um, the nap never happened. And I guess it's because I actually wasn't tired because I wasn't chasing two people around. So it was nice. Like I couldn't get the sleep to come. That never happens. Um, usually if I lay down, is sleep going to happen? So um, did that. Ran off to one of my favorite grocers. Did a little, you know, I didn't have anything. Unnecessary spending is what she did a little I did, bit of. Because I went in there and I was like, ah, there's not really anything I want. Um, but the cart detector determines that that was a lie. Um, what, what privilege you have? Yeah, there's nothing I want to buy. Let me suffer through buying some stuff anyway. It was payday. Um, so I, you know, I made a few coins. You know what that is? That's a poverty mindset. All right. Let me be poor and well free, fed. Free your mind from the <laughs> shackles of consumerism. Let me be, let me get that soul food in my stomach. Let me be happy. You know, Whatever. Happy. I know you better, I know you better cook that, that meat you've been marinating for like two weeks. I took some pork chops out. and my initial, Two weeks ago. No, I took them out. Wednesday, if you Thursday. Have, if, if you your eyes I have took, to roll in the back of your head to figure out Thursday when you took them out, you took them out thought, too long ago. I thought David's parents were coming home. So you gonna after, blame my parents after the recital? So I was gonna cook dinner. So she's blaming you. And Mom you know and my my father in law was <laughs> he'd been real quick lately. Be like, nah, I'm going home. <laughs> so what? So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so what will not happen? What you will not do. I'm not, I'm not insulting you will not, anybody. You're only cutting me off because you, will you know not, I'm speaking the truth. You will not truth. come for my father. I'm not coming for him. You will not come Dad for Donald. just so quick to be like, all you right, I'm going to go, I'm you will good not, to go you home. You will not come for Donald. So back in the day, it'd be like, okay, we do a function. They come all the way to Charlotte. They'd come to our house and hang for a little bit. But nah, he's like, look, if I'm not already at your house, I'm not going to your house. And I respect it. So I took it out just in case, like, they were going to come. I was going to make dinner. They ended up not coming. I can't remember what happened Friday that we, um, Friday they did come over and mom and I went out 
to, I can't even remember the name of an event, the event. So we were out for most of the afternoon. By the time we got home, it was seven. We had had a late lunch. She and I had had a late lunch. Um, so I didn't cook it that day. So I'm, I think that's, I put the marinade on it Thursday night. Didn't cook it Friday. Saturday, what happened Saturday? Something happened Saturday. So I didn't do it Saturday. Uh, oh, I yeah, had, you weren't home, grenade. and it was just me and the girls. So I think we just kind of piecemealed. The Saturday the day you ordered Kuzos? Saturday was the afternoon. Okay, Kuzos, so we yes. ordered um, from I, Eat Black CLT. Uh, the, I ordered. He ordered Kuzos, uh, which is one of our local black-owned establishments. Get the Lobster Mac. Just do yourself the favor. It's fantastic. Um, so it's, it's then happening. I didn't have a reason to cook because it's he amazing. ordered food. And the next day... I had taken the girls down to my parents, so I wasn't here to cook. Um, and then he ended up ordering a pizza. So it's still there. I, I have to do the smell test. It's been sitting in the marinade. Um, I have to do the smell test. At this point, the way I'm sensitive about like just... Yeah, you wasted meat. Duration of meat. Um, you wasted good meat. You could have cooked it. Like You've seen the... Ma- you've been looking at it. You no, even I mentioned it I yesterday. Didn't, I didn't put it in there. It's not for um, me to cook. Anyway, so yeah, uh, and I was actually looking forward to it because it was a, it was like a, it was an, an evaporated milk marinade. So I seasoned it really good, and then I put the pork chops in there. So I mean, they probably will be fire, um, and I'm sure so will the toilet. So it's just not worth it um, well, if if we do eat it. But anyway, TMI vibes. Anyway, um, what were we talking about before? What are you drinking? Uh, a Paloma. Google it. Okay. Uh, I'm drinking a apple flavored whiskey. Whiskey. So it's like a hard, hard apple juice, but it's not really, really. No, don't disrespect apple. Yeah. Don't, yeah. yeah I'm it's good. harder it's, than that. It's, it's a, an apple flavored whiskey. Yeah, it's good. It's good it's stuff. Just, yeah. So yeah. we're at about seven minutes. All right. Um, yeah, because you spent like five talking about meat that you've allowed to go spoiled. It's sitting in the fridge. It's not bad. You're not going to cook it, though. Yeah, because I lost the appetite for it. When I had that. And then Salas over there after her recital, which was amazing. She was so precious. Um, requested Bojangles. <laughs> like, where have I gone like a wrong? True, like a true Charlotte native. Where have I gone wrong? I said, what do you want? Your, she didn't even wait for us to ask what. She, she wanted some she Bojangles. Like, I want some Bojangles. And she there's ate, none, like, there's nothing. none of the chicken. She put the there's chicken nothing. in a Ziploc bag <laughs> and put it in the fridge. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with our child. <laughs> Wanting Bojangles. She's just a true North Carolinian, that's all. Yes. But anyway, so by the time this episode airs, it will be two days from now. Uh, but it's going to be this during, Monday, Monday night. During uh, this is the week that the weekend will be Juneteenth. Um, so I believe, again, it's 156 years since Juneteenth took place. If you're not familiar with Juneteenth, please remove yourself you from Juneteenth? the rock. Juneteenth or. Well, since the emancip- since the word of blacks that were enslaved were actually freed made its way to Texas. Okay. Um, so this, you know, we're celebrating. We celebrate. Uh, I I feel like we celebrate all of June, but the specific date is June nineteenth, uh, which is this Saturday. We are representing in our you know our Juneteenth Nelia. Here we go in these Juneteenth streets. His shirt is really cool. Mine was supposed to be purple, but it's blue. It, it yeah, looking on screen, it looks like a it looks like, like a, a off purple, like a like a very slight purple. And I look like an off white. Um, so please, you if you don't, it. <laughs> if you aren't familiar with Juneteenth, do yourself the favor of getting out from under the rock that you have been beneath and educating yourself, um, because it is a very important holiday in American history. It's a very important event that took place, uh, and it's something that needs to be remembered. So, and go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to stop before you go on too long because we need to take a break and then we can get okay, dive further got, into it. We got some time. Um, I was going to talk about Charlotte celebrations for Juneteenth, but since you're over here. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll do that after we come back because it'll be a perfect roll in. So uh, we're going to take our first break. We'll come back. We'll let Jess finish her whatever she was doing about Juneteenth and then we'll uh, we'll get to the show. Stay tuned. All right, we're back. Mm, after I was cut off. Yes, because we have a format. So I'm sorry that there are rules that you have to abide by. Oh, hush. 
So continue with what you're talking about. Oh, no, no, now I should continue. So yeah, we can make this episode real short this week if you want. I can make your life real short this week if you want. Dang, always whining about us. Just do the Shoot, bit. I'll go return. Do, I'll return all them Father's Day gifts and buy myself something. Do the bit. So in the city of Charlotte, uh, there are several festivals that are taking place. I think I was actually working back when I was working my uh, my crackers. Snack crackers, not white people crackers. Uh, my sna- <laughs> snack crackers uh, field marketing program many moons ago. What my um, my co manager he actually took me to a Juneteenth event, and I think that's was when it the I. Festival? No, it was not. But I'm getting ready to bring up the Durag oh, Festival. Oh, sorry. So, um, so that was kind of my. I think I'd been to a Juneteenth festival when I worked with um, my energy shots. So we had just kind of walked through and it's come a long way from then. And I'm glad because back then I didn't even know what Juneteenth was. And this was maybe 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, Shameful. You, so, I mean, remember someone, I'm a northerner. Someone, so someone failed you. I'm a northerner. And if you all think American history is skewed as it is, I feel like a Northern American history, um, the way they depict things is, it's a whole nother conversation, but I'm so glad that, you know, there are, there's progress, there are events happening. And I hope that as the years continue, you know, we get like Juneteenth parades and, you know, I just hope it just becomes a national, maybe even international celebration for freedom. Um, you had just alluded to it. We do have the do rag festival. Um, I think this might be the third or fourth, either the second or third year. Um, the Damn It Crew, that's what they're called. Um, there's like uh, Damn It Fanny, Damn It Wesley. Um, they're just some, they're they're kind of a combination of artists and activists in the Charlotte area. Anytime there's something artistic, like the mural that they put in um, on South Tryon, North Tryon, um, they were, uh, Damn It Wesley was part of a painting that. So, you know, they put that on. It's taking place in Camp North End, you know, where I took the girls to the little beach. Um, so if you're in Charlotte, it's it's amazing. It gets really big national recognition. Um, but I don't want it to take away from what Juneteenth is. Like, the Durag Festival is amazing. It's cool. Like I remember watching the pictures and the videos last. The last I don't know how to put a Durag on, so I, I didn't go. Um, but they had like epic long do rags, and they were colorful and artistic. And I mean, it was just I can't say exactly. There's words I want to use to describe it, but I can't really say that on the podcast. It's just not my how I speak. But um, it was real, just just stuff, um, and it was it looked fun. And I would go uh, in another year, not this year. Next year I'll go. It's just hot. Everything is to be it's very, it's very hot. And it's hot here. But um, I very, still very think humid. that big Juneteenth events need to happen, just like we do Martin Luther King parades and events for that. There needs to be stuff that takes place around Juneteenth and that is titled Juneteenth. And maybe you know, like, I, I, oh. I think once we get to the point where it's a national holiday, mm-hmm. that we'll start that to see we'll start to see that happen. So um, it would be it, it would be great to see it, you know, obviously more in terms of like parade and week or weekend long, uh, maybe like city, go, like county government mm-hmm. sponsored events. Um, it would be great to see that. And, you know, maybe like one off towns, you know, individual towns and cities across the country. But, you know, I, I'd love to see it become a national holiday. I think it's, you know, well, well past due. <laughs> but um, I think. That's something that we could, I think we're closer now to it happening than, than ever before, mm-hmm. to be honest. So that would be great to see. Yes. So make sure you do something to celebrate Juneteenth. If you don't go somewhere, watch a documentary about it. Just educate yourself on on it in some capacity. Do a Google search so that you can familiarize yourself with Especially it. Especially if, uh, if you've got your public school education from the, the Deep South. <laughs> because there's no telling. Yeah. There's no telling. Uh, it probably wasn't mentioned. Um, and... If it was, it, there's no chance that it was accurate. Yeah, how accurate it was. So, uh, revisionist history. Just, um, you know, quick Google search or reach out to your, you know, reach out to your black friends. No, we're tired. We're no, busy. No, no. 
Don't do that. Do your own <laughs> research. No. Don't reach out. What are you going to say? If I was white, what am I going to do? Hey, black friend, how you doing? How's the weather where you are? No. Can you please describe Juneteenth to no, me? No, you would say, hey, your name here. <laughs> Insert. <laughs> Insert your name here. <laughs> I was wondering if you had some time to come over and we could talk about Juneteenth, what your experiences was like growing up, learning about it, or when did you learn about it? And what kind of advice would you have for somebody who knows about it but wants to learn more about it? Simple. And it doesn't have to be, a, oh my look, God, do your own look, research. I'm tired. Look, I'm exhausted. Look, I hope you, this is this is why you need more than one black friend. No. Because if you text me asking me to give you history lessons, I'm going to send you to Google. Oh, then you know what? Um, and then you know what? And then you know what? Stop whining. I'm not, no, I'm not going to stop, stop whining. whining. Then stop whining. Okay. Stop whining. Yo, yeah, we, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we switched gears real quick, I didn't we? I go out of my way we to watch gears documentaries real on quick. founding fathers and all real this quick. stuff. I know I'd be knowing about That's you great. Know, all the more reason, stuff. All the so, more reason for you to be informed and to share that, that wealth of information. I don't have an education degree. For you to share and that wealth of information. And they tell you that you should not be bothering your black friends to ask, to, t to educate you. That's the okay. effort you need to put in. Okay, it seems lazy to me, but that's whatever. So, um, King Lazy himself. King Lazy? King Lazy. Oh, wow. King, King of the Lazies. King of the Lazies, who produces an entire podcast that allows you to get up here and wax ridiculousness. I can go. Please do, after we're done recording. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see what I got to deal with? Um, so, on... <laughs> so in uh in light of Juneteenth and uh all things black culture, um I wanted to to mention an article that came out in local newspaper today about Charlotte Mec or Mecklenburg County agreeing to spend two million on a racial equity initiative. Uh the language is very specific because there are there are laws here against um using public funds for a for one sole demographic of people. So you have to kind of generalize and broaden language. But obviously, if you're smart, this isn't rocket science. This is a form of reparations. So three other, uh, there have been three other places, uh, government, local governments that have announced reparations for, uh, for black communities. Um, Evans, Evanston, Illinois, Asheville, right up the road. And now uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg or Mecklenburg County. So $2.1 million dollars. Um, will be <laughs> will be uh, used to uh, it will be they haven't exactly decided how are they going to distribute the funds but some ideas are uh, grants for entrepreneurship um, home uh, helping people with you know with housing um, health care which is which is very important so uh, that has not yet been determined but it has been announced oh and real quick before i forget moving on not to move on too far from juneteenth shout out to monroe mm -hmm. our uh our, our sister town the local town uh, over there oh the town over there down yonder uh for declaring juneteenth a uh holiday the city has declared juneteenth a holiday and that was spearheaded by uh, a friend uh of ours a mentor of mine former basketball coach a future guest on Rush Vibes, uh, Councilman Franco McGee um, spearheaded that effort to get it recognized as a uh, paid holiday for city employees. So um, shout out to, to Franco and the city and Monroe. They're not so, well, I'm not going to say it. But shout out to Monroe and, and, and Franco on, on this one. But yeah, so uh, Mecklenburg County announces basically reparations for uh, their, 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 their black constituents. I think it's, I think it's a pretty, it's a big, the, the, the confidence to actually put this forward, to 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 do it, to declare it, uh, is not insignificant. Two million dollars is not a lot of money for a, an initiative like this. I understand that, but the way certain people react when they hear the word reparations in relation to black people, the way that they get upset, I'm very surprised that uh, our local government would, that was was confident and brave enough to actually, you know, put this up for a vote and, and vote on it and pass it and, and, uh, you know, proceed with the initiative. So I'm, I'm, ex I'm interested to see where it goes, uh, and how they build on it because obviously 2 million isn't going to be enough. So if this, if this is going to be a reoccurring thing in, in budgets, is it going to be, you know, expanded on in the future? 
you know, that remains to be seen. But I think it's a big step. Your thoughts? I am slightly underwhelmed. And it's it's an extreme slight. Uh, initially, when David sent it to me, I, I think I sent the eye roll emoji. Um, or at least I felt the eye roll emoji. Because personally, I think a lot of it is too little, too late. I'm very weary on a lot of these initiatives. Um, Evans, I know, I remember when Evanston was mentioned. I think it's, I think they started that initiative maybe last year. I haven't followed up to see. Um, and what upset me with Evanston is that they're, so Illinois passed and legalized marijuana. So they're using the money, the taxes from legalized marijuana to fund this reparation initiative. And if you study the history of Evanston, there were like a lot of it, it, it you have a lot of white sprawl. You have a lot of blacks who were pushed out. Um, I mean, it's the typical American city history um personally i feel like if they're going to use tax dollars they need to use um property tax dollars because there are a lot of minorities there are a lot of brown and black individuals who are imprisoned because of marijuana which is now legalized where companies are making millions and billions of dollars off of it people have turned the marijuana industry into this luxury industry and i personally don't think that it's politically correct to use the funds that people are profiting off of where someone not condoning drug sales or anything but but there's always a but, but not to but, but now that it's legalized i just think it's insulting so i've never i'm not a big fan of what how evanston is going about it i support initiatives for and i don't want to use reparations in tandem with these initiatives because reparations were supposed to equal the the playing field and that these programs are not going to do it like in my opinion things like no child left behind that it didn't help that was really just forcing children who were not ready for the next grade level to go to the next grade level because we can't leave them behind because you think that and I think there were better ways that that stuff like that could have been implemented. Shout maybe out, shout out to George Bush. Maybe figuring out different means of educating children as opposed to forcing kids to learn in the same standardized format. So I don't like like I feel like one for Charlotte. I'm I I, I appreciate the effort. I personally don't know that I believe change is really going to come. Um, I haven't looked at the comments of this article, but I'm sure the white tears are flowing heavily um, because people get very offended by reparations. And I don't know if we're even going to touch on this this topic, but the fear of being left behind, I think, is is very high with a certain demographic of people. And everyone wants equality but when it comes to putting an effort extra effort to create the equal playing field um then people are like whoa 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 whoa, that's not fair so 2.1 million is a lot of money it's not enough money um i feel like if we looked in the history books and you know the most profitable plantation how many slaves did how many enslaved people did they have what was their annual profit it would probably exceeded um the equivalent of today's 2.1 million so you know I, i'm still granted i can't turn back time uh no one can turn back time no one can make you know the whole 40 acres and a mule promise no one can you know make up for the injustices that were that were made the promises that were made so personally 2.1 million where they're going to do grants whether it's not going to make up for you know urban sprawl and pushing people out and you know taking over putting people in neighborhoods where they're not seen as the best and now today they're gentrifying those neighborhoods and pricing those people out i think a lot of it it's so systemic you have to it, it has to be within education where we're educating people differently where we're introducing black history into american curriculum and you're not teaching children to see the first time they are seeing 
black people in history books, it's as enslaved people. And the first time they're seeing white people in history books, it's as pilgrims who were, you know, fighting for religious freedom. So they left their homelands and establishing, you know, one group of people being less than another. So there's so, for me, it's like, oh, that's sweet. But it's like when it's your birthday and someone just gives you an empty card. Like, you can put a gift card in there. Empty card. Oh, you mean just like just, just a, card. a card? Like here you go, oh, happy birthday. Okay. Like I, I mean this. I get the gesture. I, you know? I do that a lot. So. You stopped at you, <laughs> you stopped <laughs> at Dollar cards. Tree. You it's found the thought, a, it's the thought you that found counts. That's still but effort. It is effort, but for me, it's like. I'm it's sad. Just I, I go to I go to the the ninety nine cent cards. He does. Though. He does. You know, you're I not mean, getting. He gets, he, gets, he gets me nice. My cards. wife. Yeah, my wife. My mom. But my like y'all regular folks. Yeah, people who I hoof around the way. Like y'all getting the ninety nine cent um, card. So for me, it's like it's I, all love. Though. I see the intent, but it's just it's just disappointing. There are other ways that things can be handled. There are other ways that things can be done. Um, but I don't like the use of the word reparation. Um, I appreciate that. Well, they're, they're, confident they're not. Enough. They're not using it. Char- Mecklenburg County is not using the word reparations. Oh, I thought the article you said. No, there are. It's it is a form. It's essentially what it is, but okay. it's not. That's not the the language that they're using. But what they're doing it's a now, form, a form of it. Okay, what you they're doing say. now is not going to make up for generational wealth that's well, been lost. Well, I don't. I don't know that it. It. I don't know one. I don't know that you can in a generation. Uh, and number two, I don't know that it's something that you can do with one with one piece of legislation or one act or one you know one fund. Right. Like, I think it's something that it has to be sustained. It has to be uh, uh, there has to be a level of commitment to the initiative. But it, it takes time. Like you can't you look at how much time has passed, like, say, between now and and when and, and Black Wall Street, like, yeah, people are recognizing it now. But you know, it's only 100 years. Huh? It's only 100 years. What do you mean only 100 years? It's that's all, a that's a lot of time. It's a lot of time, but there's someone, there are people who were there that are still alive. So one, we need to change that narrative of it's been a lot of no, time. No, well, no, wait. One, let me finish. Two, yes, a hundred years okay, is. You, put that little skinny uh, uh, finger down. Nah, because you're not about to come over here and try to try to water down my point, just so you can say, "When have you been alive a hundred years?" No, I haven't. Okay, then. So calm down. And let me finish my point. So number number one, <laughs> it's my Bernie finger. <laughs> Someday someone's gonna let, snap that let thing me off. let me be clear um as you there's a lot of time but so much like it it takes like to lose significant wealth right that you would maybe have left to your kids and your kids had they not blown it would have left to their kids like multiple generations it's hard to make even in just a hundred years to use your 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 time frame is still hard to make up in one generation. It's like the stock market. Like they say, if your account is at, you know, say a hundred percent and then you lose 30%, you don't just have to get that 30% back. You have to get more, Mm -hmm. more than it to get back to where you, where you were. Like it's going to take more than the amount of time that it's been since, you know, Mm -hmm. people is say for in wall, black wall street, you know, saw that, saw that amount of wealth. It's going to be hard to get that back. So that's what I'm saying. It's not, you're not going to get it in one, one, one act of a county government. It's got, there has to be a commitment over a number of years, sustained action, reinvention, um, creative ways. Look where, 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 where the black communities are struggling the most, where there can be the most impact, um, raising the budget, finding different ways to get money where you can, can funnel money into that fund. And so it can grow and you can have more of an impact quicker. It just takes time. So, um, yeah, two point, you could look at 2.1 million now and you're like, if you think that's all there is, but I'm looking at this as this is a start. It's not insignificant because like you said, a lot of people get upset when they hear reparations or any form of, of, <laughs> uh, any of form of, of special, any, any form of special treatment to, 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 to black people, like it, it causes an uproar. So, um, I think it's, you know, I, I think, well, I mean, they should, I don't know that we should like, you know, throw them into the hall of fame, but I think they should be commended for, for, for doing this. Cause I think it's, it's pretty significant. So, um, I, I think it's, you know, I think it's, I think it's a big first step. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Like you said, Nancy clap. That's, that's what they're getting. So real right quick, now. um, we talked about in our intro, uh, Juneteenth get out. Um, 
celebrate. If you don't know, learn about it. I mentioned um, if you're in the if you had a if you had a, a southern public public school education, there's probably that means a lot you of didn't get an educa- there's, there's you didn't prob- get a history. There's education. probably a lot of uh, events that you're unaware of. Um, so I just thought I'd run off a couple, a few, just a few, a few massacres, just just a couple of massacres uh, that you can that you can research that took place here. That took place. You probably live in a gentrified house on a street that this mass one of these massacres. So took place. you know it, it's like I said, not insignificant. You should probably just take a look at them and just, you know just just see what happens. So you have uh, Rosewood, 1923, New Orleans. Mm. 1860, you know, 1866. Obviously, there was Tulsa 1921. I hate to cut you Vicksburg. off, but I'm going to do it. So, two things. So, New, the New Orleans massacre, to, there have been two massacres that took place in New Orleans a black massacre and an Italian massacre. The Italian massacre, they hung 10 Italians. They, were, they received reparations. Look that one up, too. Carry on. Uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. Mm. 1898. Don't get me started on Wilmington. Uh, Vicksburg, 1874, Chicago, 1919, mm-hmm. Detroit, 1943. Mm-hmm. That's like, my dad was born in 47. So that's, that's not, that's almost within his lifetime. Um, Atlanta, 1906. Mm-hmm. Did I say Memphis already? 1866. So, I mean, you, you see that there's, there's a lot of, uh, massacres and, and huge events that had a significant impact on black culture. Uh, that uh yeah that 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 a lot of people have never heard of the black people haven't heard of because they've had uh a public school education education that just you know just kind of skipped past a lot of that even philly 1985 the move movement yeah so um you know i i i'm i understand like we 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 did an episode a few a few episodes back where we were talking about like especially with a lot of movies how they they, they seem to be making Hollywood seem, seems to be milking black trauma. Right. Um, and if you look at all the, the, the black, uh, history month collections on all of these streaming apps, it's always like, <laughs> like all these slavery movies, all these black, like depression, you know, movie or, or movies with like, it just makes you depressed. No if, joy. If you, if you watch it, no joy. It, it, honestly, so I don't, so I don't, <laughs> I hate to use this as a moment for you to tell you, go, go read up on instances where hundreds of black people were, brutally murdered and, and killed. But I think it's important to know uh, because this is a part of the covering up or the, the, the gliding by mm-hmm. of, of history that is done a lot. And I get curriculums are robust and, you know, you only have so much time, but these things are important nonetheless. Uh, and when we're in a time where we're talking about banning a certain curriculum from being taught in schools. Uh, but again, we, say monuments and statues and schools shouldn't be renamed because we don't want to erase history. Well, this is part of history that needs to be taught. That's already been erased. Essentially it's been covered up and kind of pushed to a, to a corner in a closet and hoping that, you know, nobody notices it. So look the stuff up, uh, get educated, treat yourself to some knowledge, mm-hmm. um, and enjoy, enjoy Juneteenth. Cause it's also, you know, father's day weekend too. So yeah. have some fun. But as for Saturday, we're not really concerned about the father. <laughs> we're concerned about, the black experience. But yes, definitely educate yourself. And it may, if you watch these, you were just touching on how, you know, Black History Month and it's just, you know, all the, the sadness. Um, and that is sad that that's what, you know, we get the shortest month of the year and that's what we're, fo- that's what we have to put out. But it's important to watch these things with an open mind to gain understanding and perspective. And then also one of the books that I've been reading, it's actually been a really hard read. It's a, it's a simple book, but it's a very difficult read. And um, it talks about how trauma travels generationally. Even if you don't know of an experience directly, trauma travels. So to the previous point of a hundred years wasn't that long ago. If somebody, it wasn't, if somebody was, cause you got these rich people, their money was a hundred years away ago and they're still balling today. So don't, don't get me started. Um, so if somebody's grandmother went through something and a lot, and a lot of trauma travels through females. So 
what people don't know is, well, people should know, but women are born with their eggs. So at one point, when I was pregnant with Solace or Savi, I was not only carrying my child, I was carrying my grandchild. So any trauma that I was dealing with went to my child, which in turn also goes into my grandchild. So think of, that's three generations. That's, that's assuming they have kids, but... That's get, okay. Assuming you. they have kids, but I understand. Um, so that's three. That's three generations. Three generations is essentially a hundred years. So if you think about traumatic events that has that have happened, these massacres that have happened, and, and the same thing, people it, like it can happen with men and their sperm as well. So it's like these things are inherited within you. So it's a great book. I'll, I'll post it on IG um, for people to to read it. But it's definitely a tough read because it, it gives you different perspective of things people go through and how you know you'll have someone you know in your family and you don't understand like why is this person a drunk? Why is this person a gambler? And maybe you. Know, know a great great grandfather was a gambler or a great grandmother or something did something and it travels so to expect instant change is not something that i expect but to understand that what i'm dealing with now could potentially affect my grandchild who's not even present who's not here um but just because i was here and they were through scientific osmosis, however you want to say it, I'm not a doctor. Um, they are affected through it. She so did that's, stay at Holiday Inn last night. <laughs> that's like that. That's already three generations touched. So you know, if God forbid my child goes through something, or her child goes through something, then you add, you continue to add, and then you've just got these generational things that keep coming up, and people are wondering, oh, I don't understand. Life has gotten better, but it's like that trauma is still it still permeates you. It's still in you and you might, it might not make sense to you. There are people who go through psychological things and it doesn't make sense to anybody why, but there's history behind it. So I think that's why I get so like, okay, it's nice. Nice try. Thank you. Next. So definitely do your research, but also have an open mind. Like it's given me a whole new perspective as to why, you know, people do things that they do, not justifying it, not saying like, Go around murdering people because, you know, 30 seconds. your great grandfather was a murderer. Um, but, you know, it, it makes sense. Get some help. But it makes sense. I'm going to stop talking now. Cool. So we're going to take a break and we'll come back. We're back. Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. We're not, oh, sorry. I can't. We're not do this. Um, so. Look at that shirt, man. This shirt is fire. I know. Mine's like a spark, but yours is fire. I bought I bought some more for us too. So I oh, guess our next episode. Look at you clothing me. Can you buy me start buying me some pants? No, nah. because I don't want to mess around and get the wrong size, and then it's like, oh, so you think? <laughs> I'm just trying to. I don't want any of that. I don't need that drama. I don't, I don't need that drama in my life. That's wisdom I know, right there. I, I know my limitations. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, we may if we'll probably because this is Monday. So if we Goodness. record, if we record again. You know, it'll, you'll see it post Juneteenth, but we'll still probably have on some Juneteenth themed because it's really, I mean, you really rock it year long, year, mm -hmm. year round. You January, know Juneteenth, so October, I don't, you know, Juneteenth. <clears throat> should always never, be, you should always be celebrating never black history. forget Juneteenth. Um, so speaking of just color and race issues, um, R racial vibes, racial vibes. Uh, so, uh, popular. Is that a cord? Okay. I've seen cords and thinking they're snakes. No, nah, there's, there's a snake in the house and I'm, where I'm just sitting here chilling. <laughs> because it's all curvy. I thought it was coming. I was like, whoo, that's about to be gone. Uh, a popular stage yeah, play you, you are gone. has now become a screen, has, has received a screen adaptation. And it got so much hype. People were super excited. Represents a very diverse neighborhood in New York. I I was super excited about it. I was, you know, I was ready. Like they, you know, they hyped it. The music was playing. So I was, I was, I'd be like in the kitchen, I'd be dancing, I'm like getting it. Um, so what we watched it and you know, we watched it with the girls. It's super important to us to expose the girls. We talk about it all the time, but to 
expose them to the arts and music and theater and just performing overall. So, you know, you'd see Salas and Savi dancing. They, they, for their age group, they enjoyed it as much as they can. I personally, um, as I was watching it, had moments where I was like, there really aren't a lot of people in here that look like me. And that's something I do often. I think as a, not only as a black woman, but as a dark skinned black woman, I'm regularly looking for myself. You dark skinned? You know, so I think I have some inherent trauma because it's them, it's some them, people. It's them, it's them eggs. <laughs> so, <laughs> the eggs got passed down. See, Somebody was real dark back back in the day and that trauma just got passed down but they weren't like so so i've been referred to as brown skinned brown skin. oh sorry um i've been referred you skin know just like i pearls. went just like pearls just like pearls oyster pearls um oyster. I, oh that the, the oyster came out a little bit i heard oysters oyster hey uh, is it is it car keys or khakis okay so you know it's car keys like no say it car keys not khakis no, they're you say my khakis, khaki pants, yeah, and car keys. I don't know. No, why. no, don't try to act like no. Say it in the say it in the accent. I don't say like I don't. Ka, keys, khakis, so khakis, ka keys. Two words. Yeah, so pants. Ka- okay, we're not doing this. Um, so in high school, okay, y'all are gonna get a quick a quick memory. Um, oh, get a Jessica so story. I have, I do have hyper pig- I have pigmentation issues. Um, so my, like if you'll, if you look at pictures of me 10 years ago, I'm a completely different complexion 10 years ago than I am now. If you see young pictures of me, I'm a different complexion than I am now. And I think that's a lot of people in the black experience, but I do have pigmentation, um, issues and I've had to work to find like skincare products that have helped me maintain, um, my, my complexion my legs are a completely different color um but i dated this guy um what's his name i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say his name no say his name yes uh i, I, I want to know who he is i dated this guy I don't in, know where he lives. in high school we dated for like three weeks um he's puerto rican um puerto and rican. when we broke up like he just he just like flipped the script and just became like such a bully, such a mean guy. And he used to call me like blacky and dark. So I think in the back of my mind I wanna know his name. The, like that that tormenting has um told me that I'm I'm really dark skinned and I, I, I tan well. You know, I do have, you know, yes. um colonist blood in me. I just need an so can you sh- just silence the dress. Um, I do have I do have colonist blood in me, so if I'm in the sun for a decent amount of time, I will get a good tan. Um, so I see you got me all flustered trying to ignore you. So I, I am name. very sensitive about color, um, and I think within the black experience, just regardless of where you are and where your blackness is from, um, I think. We also, we, it's obvious we have our own disparities um, and our own internal segregation. You've got, you know, the history of the brown paper bag um, and holding up, which is such a weird shade of brown anyway. So I don't know why we were using, people were using that as comparison. That's neither here nor there. So I'm watching this play. I, again, everything I watch for the most part, I look for myself. How, is there, is there a dark skinned woman? Is there um, a black woman? Uh, how many are there? These are things that I subconsciously and consciously analyze. So I'm watching this and I'm realizing that for a neighborhood in New York, there are not enough dark skinned people in here. I'm born in the Bronx. I spent many a times in the Bronx. I've been through this particular neighborhood. Um, So I understand New York urban New York culture. I I roll my eyes and do quotes because the word urban is misused um, a lot. So, uh, and I'm also like contributing to the misuse, but I can't think of another word off the cuff. So, you know, I wasn't going to say anything of from it. Like, you know, the, for the most part, the performance was pretty good. There were some people I was like, "Mm," I feel like they could have casted somebody else. There was one scene. I even mentioned it with, with David, the, um, The father is having a conversation with his daughter. He looks at her and he says, you are Boricua. And I remember thinking, like looking at her. And again, 
I, I've never seen I had never seen this actress before. I don't know her lineage. She could be Puerto Rican. She could be Panamanian. She could be Dominican. I don't know. But from my personal black non Afro Latino experience, I wouldn't have categorized her as Boricua, and I found it weird that she was categorized as Boricua. I later saw her in an interview, the lighting was different and she did have fairer skin. So I was like, okay, maybe she is. Why are we, why are we speaking about things that we're not? Huh? Why are you speaking about something? Well, that you're I'm not? saying it because I grew up with, a, I grew up with, around a lot of different Latinos. So, you know. Latinos. <laughs> you know, a lot of the Latinos. Um, especially- <laughs> we went from, hold on, we went from khakis to Latinos. I, I, Jessica has range. Okay. I do. I do have range. If anybody um, needs someone who can play someone from Worcester who doubles as a Latino, Latina, don't get it, me in trouble. Call this woman. Don't get me in trouble. Call this woman. Uh, so she's got talent. As I'm trying to say, wouldn't have. I'm not going to say what I'm going to say because I don't want it to be misinterpreted. No, nah, say so, it. Say it with your chest. So, in my opinion, it wouldn't have elevated whiteness. Because okay. what I felt and what a lot of other people have felt, it's coming out and they come in for them hard, um, lacked Afro-Latino representation. I just felt like that was a very missed opportunity. So today, you know, it's it's making it's making it circulations, you know, the blacks of all blacks are starting to get mad. The Afro-Latino blacks, the black blacks, the African blacks, the Australian blacks. If you're black, you're mad um, because they're saying so one of the a couple of the stars, the director, the producer, they all had interviews. The director and the producer kind of brushed around it. They were like, you know, telling people, you know, if you got a problem with colorism, make your own, like, do your own, if do your own play, do your own movie. Um, skirt, not cool. Um, the director it's, said, there's a, there, I mean, there's a point, there's a point time, in there somewhere. Every time the director was confronted by one particular Afro Latina um, reporter or journalist, uh, she he would come back with, "This is a conversation that needs to be had," and that's <laughs> almost the root of the problem. Like we can't keep having the this conversation; we is... actually need to put to action, and that's why we are still in these situations. That's a great question. You know, we need to have that conversation. That's exactly what he said, and it's like you can't. We can't keep having the conversation. And not just not, just not right action. now. We can't have it right now. Let's not because have the conversation I don't, about what I made. I don't know. But, but we'll we need have to have the conversation. Let's table that. <laughs> put a pen in it. Let's put a, put a pen in it. So, you know, and the, the t- a couple of the actresses did, they, they, they gave the same um, journalist, asked them questions about, you know, how do you feel about the lack of diversity? If you go to this neighborhood, you know, you're, you're seeing Afro-Latinos. You're also seeing, like, blacks. Um, the thing about New York, it doesn't, in my opinion, in my experience, it doesn't matter how, de- like, the races are mixed. They're, they're like, they're there. I mean, the white people, y'all are gentrified in your own little area. Um, but there are a few of you sprinkled in there. But for the most part, it's, like, Latino, black, you got your Asians. Like, we're, we're, we're a melting pot. So to depict a New York neighborhood as if it's only one color latino is insulting so one of the so one of the girls she said you know she she kind of felt bad she you're gonna have to go find the interview um but she felt bad because you know looking back on it she recognizes that her siblings are darker um than she is and she also wishes like now looking at it she she feels that you know they aren't representative represented in the movie and then another girl she did, she did the equivalent to white people's I have black friends in the Latino community. And y'all have one. I'm about to tell you. I'm about to school you about yourselves. So she goes, well, in the audition room, there were Latinos of all colors. They were Afro-Latinos. And, you know, but I think they just casted the people who were best for the roles. And that was another skirt. Like, so you mean to tell me in this whole movie, in this whole cast, all these leads, the only people that were best for the roles happened to be white passing. And I'm not trying to necessarily say people aren't deserving. To be a performer is not an easy thing. To to get a job as a performer is not an easy thing. Um, but, but there it is. 
big old butt. It was coming. To to as I think back on the performances and I think of my interactions with Afro Latinas, um, not just in New York but in general, um, there are there are people who I felt there were a couple of people in the in the particular production that I was like, you know, you're kind of lacking. Like there's 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 a a juge I would have expected more that you're not giving me. And for her to say that, it was very tone deaf. And it reminds me of every, t- like a lot of my, a lot of white passing, fair skinned Latinos, anytime race things come up, they're so quick to be like, oh, if you see my whole family, we're all different colors. And it's like, ha, great for you. But that to me, that's the equivalent of, I have black friends. Oh, if you see my uncle, he's this color. If you see this, he's this color. And it's like, so so it kind of makes me inclusive. And the race relations, and the reason why I'm so sensitive about it is because if we don't make efforts to highlight the darker skinned people across all ethnicities, we're canceling out significant parts of history. I get insulted because I think about, you know, countries like Argentina that had legitimate genocides where they killed off their black populations. They raped women, black women, to whiten the population, to ensure that those who were left, their children became white. They pushed them out into, you know, refugee camps in Colombia. It goes deep, but that's the problem. Horrible. It goes deep. So countries like Brazil that paid Europeans Horrible. to move to their country to whiten their populations. Horrible. Reason why Nazis relocated to certain countries in South America because they were okay. You're sassy. No, I'm being oh. serious. All these um, things are horrible. But if I may, if I may do a but. Okay, be devil's advocate. What does this have to do with with the movie? Because. Just as in America, the black experience is is regularly erased, or as you said earlier, glided over the the. Glossed. Uh, I should have huh? said I should have said glossed. Glossed. That over. would have been a better word to use. Um, the the. Can I get it right Af- next time? The, the black, the Afro Latino experience is also glossed over, and it's. I think I had mentioned to you earlier. You know, situ- just like. When things are just black and white, take ethnicity out of it. More than more ten, nine times out of ten, you know, a white person is probably going to get a particular position over a black person. Uh, things are changing, you know. You've got affirmative action, you, but you've got things that are that have to allow blacks to. Can I ask you get something? Place. Yes. You got that smirk, so I'm already in. So. Just, just a question, right? And this is what I do here. I, I ask questions because this is the Jessica, Jessica Vibes podcast. The argument I'm hearing mm-hmm. is that um, there were the the actors and actresses who were selected to represent um, characters, mm-hmm. fictional characters, mm-hmm. based on a particular neighborhood in New York, mm-hmm. uh, were too fair skinned to truly represent the actual demographic of people that make up that neighborhood in real life. Yes, that's what I said. So, why is there no outrage over Hamilton? I actually, I am bothered by it. Um, Again, because I am a dark-skinned woman, so I look for these things. And I, and I, I know a lot of people are like, why everything got to be about race? Why, you know, we have a heart. What do you always say? Well, we have a heart. I, I, think I don't like that the star of the show. The, the no, I'm talking about there are there's there are, only two. There are, there are only skin, three. There are dark. There are people of color representing people who were white, who yeah. are who are who are. Pretending to be they should actual write, people, they actual should write people, their own play. actual people who <laughs> lived, <laughs> who were white. So why is why are you not frustrated that well, that mean, they weren't? I mean, they Thomas Jefferson portrayed. had black kids. No, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm not talking about his kids. I'm talking about his seed through which he passes trauma down. I'm talking about Thomas Jefferson himself. I'm sure he has black. And him. I'm not trying to be, um, you know, I'm not I'm not anti. I, I I sympathize with what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, and I think it is absolutely important. But at the same time. You know my argument on this. There are still 
actors and actresses of color who were given a platform and given an opportunity to make their way and to to highlight what they can do in this industry in an industry that has overwhelmingly shunned people of any color throughout the course of its history. So if you take if you if you subtract a lighter skinned uh, Latinx actor or actress and you substitute a darker one, you're still taking pot money out of the pocket of a of someone who's who hasn't been given who's who looks like people who haven't been given opportunities mm-hmm. traditionally in this industry. So you're you're not you're not progressing anything because you're still taking away. So my thing is, yes, because I, I'm not from New York. I, I don't spend any time. I've been in New York like two times in my entire 33, 33 year lifetime. Um, sure. It's, I haven't been there a lot. I don't, I don't have any sort of recognition for what demographics in certain boroughs should look like so that if um, there's a movie based on it, what the people should, should look like. I have no context whatsoever, but when you're talking about a film that took 10 years to get made, 10 years, went through multiple, you know, project people overseeing the project, whatever. It took 10 years to bring it to life. It's a film that highlights Latin, Latinx actors and actresses. You got like one brother in there, I think. Literally. Like one brother. And these are films that do not get pushed mainstream very often, if at all. So you have a groundbreaking movie. That if it succeeds, be it by box office or just by popularity, whatever, it paves the way for future projects. We see this all the time. So if you're gonna, if 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 the argument is, if there's criticism, that's fair, right? Okay, yo, there should have been more. There should have been there should have been a more accurate representation of what this actual neighborhood looks like. And I think fair. that is the argument. Fair. No, that's the argument. But there's such. But the argument is 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 overclouding the act what the what the film being made and being put out actually represents. Like it's taking away from the achievement, I think, because every anybody who's talking about it is talking about this issue. They're not talking about the fact that it took ten years for it to get made, or that you don't. This is almost like the first project of its kind, where every like from 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 top billing all the way to to bottom is pretty much. Uh, a Latinx actor or actress. We're sitting here talking about whether the people are dark enough or not. And I'm not saying it like that to minimize it because it is important and representation does matter. We've said that on this podcast before. I believe it to be true, but it's not like this project isn't a success and it's not like it's advancing the opportunity of Latinx actors and actresses to get opportunities in this industry is what I'm saying. And I want, I want people to keep context of that, keep recognition of that, keep sight of that as well as being able to criticize it. Now there's a part of me because I'm so I'm, I'm removed from this for the most part. I I understand what my wife is saying. I understand that colorism matters to her. She, there's, there's, there are some, some deep wounds that she has based on treatment she received like as a kid. And you see, I was up Even here as an, adult. Yeah, as an adult, I was up here asking for dude's name and this was like middle school. So I get that, but you know who you are. I don't, I'm not gonna say I don't care, but like sometimes I just want to watch a movie and, and, and appreciate the movie Judd based it on its merits. Was it acting good? Was it dancing good? Was the choreography? Was the soundtrack? I ate? like, was it too long? Was it too short? I just want to enjoy the movie and, and, and judge it based on, whether it was good or not. I mean, sometimes we can, it's, it's okay to do that. Like it's mm-hmm. perfectly okay. And I think there's been somewhat of an over reaction is what I'm saying. Oh, what's wrong? Somebody dominating a segment. Do you, do you not, do you not appreciate that? <laughs> You're making me forget my points. I should type it. And I think it's 30 seconds. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think it's, it's 20, 25 I would love seconds. Nothing less more i would love to be able to watch something and not have to think about blackness and yes to its credit 10 years to make this film that is such an accomplishment for it to then come out post pandemic that is an accomplishment for it to have built so much hype like i love the lead the, the actual star of the the film um he's amazing his backstory is amazing um and I just, I guess it's one of those things that, what? Oh, it's yeah, one of yeah, those things shot. that, 
Like if it's have you ever had like a really good like so like a meal smells so good and then you get it and it's like man a little bit more salt would have done it. Every meal I I've, think every meal of yours I've ever eaten. It needed more salt. I'm just kidding. I, I, I feel I'm like this could have over been here. dangerous vibes. This could have been so perfect in terms of representing an area that isn't recognized that's overlooked that's probably being that's regularly being gentrified and and making sure that you're accurately recognizing it i'm not i i i, I by no means want to take away from the actors and but that's what that's what all of this I'm is speaking. that's what all of this is doing no but what it what it is saying is it's say you. hypothetically they had put you know a couple of the roles had had darker skinned um so one you comment someone said well look at the dance the dance routines like all the dance numbers it was blended and the reporter who was interviewing them said yeah but those are the roles we always get we always get the backup roles we always get the backup singer roles the dancer roles you know um there's a scene there are several scenes in a salon we get those roles it's the it's the lead and in another universe if they had casted maybe four replaced four of those current actors actresses with darker and i'm not saying they have to be as dark dark brown it it spans so many types t tones so it, it would have been a different conversation and and it wouldn't have been it would have i think it's just the issue is there was opportunity for this to be chef's kiss perfection where you had people who looked like what the neighborhood looks like. Yes, this is a fictional play. Yes, none of this is real. But when you are black, when you are darker skinned black. Morena. 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 Um, when you are morena, you want to, to see yourself. You want to... Be, feel recognized you know when we look a lot of these shows and david and i partially discussed this but we try not to have too much conversation when we know we're going to have a conversation on the the show but when you the thing with a lot of tv shows they put in they start introducing more black characters um a lot more supporting black characters but typically especially with the black female the black female lead is usually a lighter skinned woman you know she's uh either mixed or she's just a, a lighter skinned black woman and it's like yes we've checked off the black box but there's still opportunities to cast people so that little girls of all tones are recognized little like and i think that's where and it's not just blackness like there are dark tones in all cultures there's a show solace watches and it's it's an animated show and it's based on indian it takes place in india and I I watched this show and I remember just recently I was watching an episode with her and she's dancing along and she's you know taking in Indian culture and I remember thinking like there's not a single dark Indian character in this animation. They have royals, they have, you know, a sultan. I don't know what, you know, the sultan's wife is called, um a sultaness maybe. Um they have the salt, they have the children, you know, they have extended family members, they have villagers, but of the significant roles that there's not a single dark and there are dark skinned Indian people. Mar, most of the people, Indian people that I know are dark, like about my complexion. And the only thing that separates them from just being mistaken as black is Indian features are distinct. So that's something I notice even in an animation because I'm a dark skinned woman. I want to see myself. Um, and you know, when you come from a society, you know, we got 30 seconds. I don't want to get too deep. We'll come. Oh, okay. So we'll take a break and we'll come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think <laughs> I'm more sensitive about it because it's my experience and you know, I wasn't, you know, there are some people who were raised in families where it was like, which what we instill in our kids now, but where it's like your dark skin is beautiful and it glows. That for some people, you know, 20, 30 years ago, that was something they were raised on. For a lot of us, 
we didn't get into appreciating our blackness until we were in college, until we were in our mid to late 20s. So the reason representation is important, like I'm in a family where my kids are a a completely different complexion than me. So their black experience is going to differ from mine. Um, They're not going to have, unless they they darken, uh, which they could, they're not going to have situations where, you know, they're upset, sad or hurt or upset because someone called them blackie, because someone's called them midnight. They're not going to have moments where they wish... Shit. Um... They're not going to have moments where they wonder if. <laughs> you want to take a break? Hmm? You no, good? I got it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, where they wonder if the reason why they're not at a certain level of success is because they're darker. Or where they wonder if. <laughs> You know, they'd be further in life if they were mixed or if they were lighter skinned. Um, And so as a dark skinned woman, um, as a dark skinned black woman, it's it is so important to me to see someone like me, even at 31 years old, um, because I still have a lot of life left to live and I still have aspirations and I still have places I want to get. And I still have the desire to be an example to other people, other women who are in my tone classification so they can say, well, you know, if Jessica could get there, I can do that too. So I think that's why I get so sensitive and why, you know, I'm always upset when, there's not enough of us seen because we're here. Um, You know, David and I, we recently talked about all these shows that are being rebooted from the 90s and, you know, they had predominantly white cast and people are so excited about these shows coming back and when I see it, I think these shows filmed for years, people were getting paid millions of dollars and they acted as if, you know, if we were present, we were the secretary. We were, uh, you know, a, a role of service. We weren't significant enough to be in lead characters in this. So it's not, I get it. I don't want to diminish anyone's talent. I don't want to diminish anyone's performance. But I also want to recognize that there are so many people who are talented. There are dark-skinned people who are talented. And yes, there are also light-skinned people and fair-skinned people and white people who are talented. But unfortunately, the way society has set up, those people have, have been able to have the advantage. So it seems, from my perspective, that... It's time for us to recognize people that that people can be talented and can be in spaces where they're not usually seen and they're dark skinned. People can get awards and accolades and be dark skinned. You've got we're and you know, people will say that we've made progress, but I'm a 31 year old woman in 2021 sitting here bawling my eyes out because I still have that emotional hurt. I still know what it's like to consider, you know, maybe I should try and bleach my skin and lighten my tone and that might give me more opportunity. Um, So, you know, it's, there's so much more to it. So yes, it is nice to just be able to watch something and say, that was a good performance. But for me, it can't ever just be a good performance. It, there are things I'm looking for so that I can know that I could achieve that too if I wanted to. So that I know that if I happen to, if my grandchildren are dark like me, they can, ach- I, they can be encouraged to achieve things as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an experience that maybe I'm the only one dealing with. Um, but... 
that's why I can't appreciate this particular performance as well or recognize how great it is because they fell short in my opinion. And now it's like, it's already out there. So the apologies and the conversations and the trying to fix the things that have already happened, it can't be undone. But had they gotten it right, had they had someone to consult with, had people in the room said, you know, we just don't have enough diversity, had people had perspective this could have been a hit. This could have been perfect. And people would be focusing on the greatness that this performance was. But now people are too busy focusing on the lack that this was. And I feel for the stars, especially, you know, the lead star, because he did an amazing job. And his career, he's got so much opportunity in his career. And what a performance that should have really set him on a pedestal and really given him great range and opportunity is now being overshadowed because the people behind the scenes didn't make the effort to say we need to make this more culturally relevant. So that's where I'm going to leave it. You know, I, I, I typically don't get emotional. So if I do get emotional, that, that means that there's something that really bothers me. So I, I just... I'm not I'm not trying to discredit um fair skin latinas or latinos. I'm not trying to say you don't deserve. I know that we as minorities, as black and brown people, you know, we need to unite and we need to we've all suffered in our own capacity, but the suffering of blackness is 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 can never be compared to anyone who can also be white passing, um, in my opinion. Uh, and, you know, if they're, if I'm wording it wrong and if I need to be educated better, I'm always, that's why I always use the term opinionated truth. This is, you know, based off of what I have learned right where I am now, but I'm always desiring to learn more and to be, you know, as well-rounded um, in terms of my knowledge. So if I'm saying this incorrectly um, and you feel offended, please don't hesitate to reach out and, and, you know, correct me to ensure that I'm saying this right. I'm not coming from a place of malice, but I'm coming from a place of I'm a I'm a dark skinned woman. You know, if I and I've been a dark skinned woman my whole life, I've been to different countries and I've been looked at as a dark skinned woman. But my black experience is different from the black experience of a light skinned counterpart of mine who is also black. So I just but we still overall have the same experience, but it's important to make sure that we lift each other up. And yes, I acknowledge everybody's contribution to that performance, but in reality, if we really look at it, if we really look at the cast and we really take a, a dive into the culture of that particular area, it's not accurately relevant. Um, even with... Latino cultures that are known to be more predominantly Afro. So that's something that, you know, needs to be accounted for too. I definitely encourage you to go look for these, to go watch it yourself, go look for these interviews. Um, if you need me to direct you to them, please reach out to me on Instagram um, or whatever means and I'll send you to, I'll send it to you and you'll get hopefully some more perspective. But, you know, the color thing is a big deal. Um, and it hits everyone differently, and everyone is affected by it differently. But, um, yeah, I just, I feel like I'm rambling, and I, I'm just going to stop. Sorry. Don't, don't apologize. Allergies. This is the, this is the Jessica podcast featuring stop saying that. Jessica Vibes featuring David. So I'm just, I'm just here to, stop saying here to that. listen and just, you know, console and make sure you're doing all right. Um... Yeah, so I agree. Obviously, I agree and, and appreciate everything you just said. As I've, you know, been on the opposite end of, of many discussions around around those on um, that particular topic, as it as it pertains to you and, and, and our girls and just culture as as a whole. So, um, very uh, very courageous of you to be 
vulnerable in front of the camera in the the vibe tribe here on Juneteenth vibes. So um, I think that's a good place to stop. We, uh, like we said, this is our Juneteenth episode. And um, <clears throat> please go out. And if, if you haven't, you know, like we said, just, you know, do a little, a little bit of research, go enjoy, go find a Juneteenth um, function, something that's happening and, and go, go partake, go have fun, um, be among, be among your people. Um, but just make sure you know the significance of this day and then also uh, just the significance that is black history in, in America and honestly worldwide. So we uh, will bring Jay Belk in. Um, episodes every Wednesday. So we'll be back next week with another episode. This is episode 30, by the way. Ooh. Episode 30 of Rush Vibe. We are 30 episodes old and we are still going still going strong not stopping anytime soon so we appreciate you guys rocking with us be sure to subscribe to the youtube and connect with us on social media if you haven't have a good week happy juneteenth happy father's day be safe be blessed we love y'all we out